Hey everybody, this is Brett with FTO Nerd Talk, and with me today is Von Nell um, from Millennial Comics. Von Nell, Von Nell, welcome. Hey man, how you doing? How you doing? Doing good. You doing all right right now? Yes, sir. It's a, it's a tough time, but you know, everybody's trying to work with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, trying, right? Yeah. Uh, such a weird time. So, um... Tell us a little bit about yourself. You have Millennial Comics, uh, Delta Dogs um, as the primary title there. And so I have been reading it as it's been put, being posted on uh, Comixology um, and have been loving it. Um, I kind of jumped in. Um, you know, sometimes you, you see an indie title and um, it, it ends up not being well done. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but I, I saw yours. The art is fantastic. And not only is the art fantastic, the storyline is great. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your background and how, how, how we got to where we're at here with Delta Dogs. Okay. Um, well, I don't know if you got, I don't know if you figured it out just yet, but, um, Delta Dogs is actually based off of, you know, me and my family. So, uh, me being the youngest one and, uh, my other six cousins, uh, well, five cousins because the other one is my brother. And, um, I wanted to basically have a story that's really genuine. So to kind of like dive deep into each character, um, just, you know, this is my first title. I wanted to go with my cousins because I knew them the best. So um, until I get, of course, built experience on world building and character development and stuff like that. So I went with like basically something more safe of the things that we went through growing up and stuff like that. Yeah. And um, so starting with these guys, it's like really like personal, you know, of just certain the certain things that we got into, the, sh the certain struggles and stuff like that of being, uh, of course, uh, black teens. Mm -hmm. So um, not only are we black teens, now we uh, we're, got superpowers. So <laughs> it just worked out really good. So, um, you know, I didn't take any uh, no crazy classes. Again, it's just all genuine storytelling with, of course, superpowers added into it. So That's awesome, man. That's awesome. So um, are you reading any comics right now other than your own? Yeah, um, actually, Temple High from Solid yeah, Comics. Yeah, man, that's a yeah, great that's, one. Yeah, when I got into that, you know, I was just like, okay, somebody out here is, is doing it. So it's just like a good little, um, actually message the, the creator, and he's a pretty dope dude. So not only is, it, is his comics good, he's, you know what I'm saying, he's a good dude as well. So yeah. not only that, I'm actually reading um, Farmhand as well. I don't know if you heard about that. No. Um, it's published by, by Image Comics. Okay. So, um, but a lot of my reading it actually goes towards manga and stuff like that. So, um, like One Punch Man, um, uh, My Hero Academia, I read that. Um, I'm trying to find some actual horror titles, um, horror titles to get into to figure out um, just how you write something that's scary on pages, you know, yeah, through, yeah. through images and stuff like that without actually using the images, you know, to build suspense and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So again, I'm always trying to learn just different stuff um, about comic books. But yeah, that's a couple of titles I'm into right now. Have you um, had the chance to read Crescent City Monster Monsters from Dream Fury Comics? That's a good little quasi horror title that maybe you should check out. It's got some great art oh, in man. it too. Okay, okay. I'm going to check yeah. that out. Yeah, I, I never heard of that. Okay. Yeah. Look them, look them up. It's pretty cool. Um, so um, what inspires you about comics and to the point that you wanted to create your own? Well, um, I started with, um, actually, my brother, um, the one that's in the comic book, my brother actually inspired me to do all this because at first, um, you know, we was, re uh, we was looking at Static Shock, uh, Spider-Man anime series that came out in the 90s. Yeah. I don't know. I think it came out in the 90s. But yeah, it came out and we was watching that and my brother started, you know, drawing comics and stuff like that. So I'm like, you know, me being the youngest, uh, I'm like seven years old and I want to, of course, do whatever he does because, you know, that's my older brother. Um, he's doing comic books and I'm like, okay, so I can spend more time with him. Let me do it too. And I just stuck with it. And I just fell in love with it. Um, just the stories, the, the messages you could put in there. Um, the creativity you can do, you know, and this and that, it was just, it was just something that just really like blew up in me. And ever since then, since I was like, a, again, I was like seven years old, I just started writing, um, writing, writing, writing. And uh, of course, came up with 
again, my first series being Delta Dogs, which includes my brother that's in there. So <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. That's so let's let's break down Delta Dogs while we're at it. Um, obviously, the idea for Delta Dogs came from mm-hmm. your family. Um, but we're done with season one now, right? Ten issues. And so mm-hmm. season one is done and you're getting ready for season two. What's, what's without giving any spoilers, we want people to go buy the books, but what, give them a yeah. teaser. What's happened in season one? All right. So in season one, um, I, I always try to tell people, you know, you find out, okay, of course they're going to become superheroes. But at the same time, this story is not about them being superheroes, but it's the journey to becoming superheroes. Mm-hmm. You know, so, um, you you know, you see, of course, each agenda, like, hey, you know, this guy, he's into this, he's into that, this and that. And sometimes the superhero is, isn't the first option that they try to go with, you know. Um, you know, you never, you know, get powers and you want to go ahead and, you know, all right, I'm going to save the world now. You know, you don't want to do that. You know, it's just you have other things going on and stuff like that. And you want to ta- tackle those things with your powers. And, you know, just trying to find the, the, the journey of becoming a superhero, that's what these cousins are going through. Because, again, they don't have a, a mentor. They don't know exactly what to do. And, you know, as teens, we all can relate to that. Yeah. You know, we, we don't know where to go. You know, we don't wake up one morning and be like, hey, I want to become a fireman. Or, hey, I'm going to be president and this and that. You know, we find what we want to be through our life journeys, you know. Yeah. So yeah. that's what's going on in season one of f- finding what they want to be. That's cool. <clears throat> that's cool. Um, so getting ready for season two, you're in the middle of an Indiegogo campaign. Um, oh, how can people mm-hmm. find that and support you? Oh, of course, um, going to Indiegogo, typing in uh, Delta Dogs. Um, it should be like the first, second thing that pops up. Um, but not only can you support, of course, financially um, to get you a, a, a couple of uh, copies, but also just sharing and letting people know that this series is out here because not only is this series supposed to, you know, represent the superhero genre, but it's supposed to, you know, I want to write to inspire people and stuff like that. So to kind of, you know, show the world that Delta Dogs is out there and what it represents uh, would definitely help as well. Cause that's, a, that's one of the main reasons why we're doing the Indiegogo to kind of reach another, you know, um, to get people more involved with Delta Dogs. Yeah. and get people more aware of Delta Dogs. So again, yeah. spreading the word and um, supporting on Indiegogo, um, posting, stuff like that, that really does, you know, goes a long way for us. And we just really appreciate the love and support. Because you want to believe people really, really shows a lot of love at Comic-Cons and stuff like that. Just talking to us, um, when I say talking to us, not, not mean for like two minutes, but like 30 minutes, people will come by to our booth and just talk to us. It's, it's just so much fun, man. Um, just hearing people's uh, thoughts and stuff like that about the series or um, it really like boosts us up, you know, um, as far as creating and stuff like that, just hearing, you know, seeing these people sharing, supporting us and stuff like that. It just really like, again, it's a, it's a mental thing at the end of the day. That's really cool. That's really cool. I love the um, community around indie comics and especially around um, black owned, black creative comics. Um, You guys are really, really reaching a a niche out there that hasn't been met in a a long time, really. So good job, man. Um, I I assume you're close with your family since you chose to be a superhero team with them. Um, (laughs) um, (laughs) If you were granted superhuman powers, Mm. would you... Would you want superhuman powers if it meant that six of your family members also received them in real life? Uh, well, see, the thing is, um, my cousins, the ones I chose, they're a bunch of knuckleheads, so <laughs> me included. <laughs> so I, I'm not sure if we should get powers <laughs> because the things that we be doing, getting into, cutting up, um, I'm not sure if that's a really good option to go with. But me being uh, on the selfish side, I would say, yeah, give us powers. Let's see what happens. Let's go for it. <laughs> we'll just assume you'll do good with them. And <laughs> so, yep. <laughs> so any other titles coming down the road for Millennial Comics? Um, you actually get a couple of hints in issue Ooh. one, actually, of one of our next uh, next titles. And the thing about this particular one, I, lo- I love taking, like, simple ideas mm-hmm. and basically just finding any type of, like, 
things to do with them, and you know, just mixing things up and this and that. And um, that's where I really just really go off on uh, with uh, that particular character that I want to, you know, that I want to bring out in the future. Yeah, so that's definitely, awesome. Definitely, definitely keep your ear to the ground with that one. I will. I can't wait. Um, so there seems to be a, um, I don't know, maybe it's just to me, but I, I, the white guy in the room talking here, but there seems to oh, be a resurgence <laughs> of black indie comics right now. Um, that, that community is really just popping out title after title, um, and really great titles. Um, yeah. do you have any other indie titles in that genre that you're reading right now? You already mentioned, um, Sovereign Comics, any, mm. any others? Oh, I'm actually, uh, it's a lot of people. That's actually from, you know, the 757 area that I'm from. Mm -hmm. um, that's working on um, a couple of titles, um, which I can, you know, I can send you a list of. Yeah. But they're, they're not, they're in the beginning stages where they don't have the actual book out just okay. yet. Um, but of course, I'll, I'll, I'll send you some links to that, you know, yeah. once, especially once they bring out. But I'm mostly keeping uh, my ear to them as far as you know just trying to get a running start and this and that so they wanted to go through the same things i went through you know starting up yeah um but um as far as the ones that's going that's out right now that has like you know uh, a couple of books other than you know of course solving comments yeah comics uh i haven't really been um looking at the other ones as as far as like right now mm -hmm. um this year going um but again i've been just supporting yeah, you've been the, the ones You've been cranking out your own books, man. <laughs> yeah, it's, man, it's been so busy, man. Trying to again, just try to learn different ways to write and stuff like that. Yeah. So, and again, I've been working really close with uh, Tyrone as well. He's been really helping me out because, uh, again, comic books is, is not easy. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's no, not easy. You and Tyrone, love it. my my first interview was with Tyrone, and our mm -hmm. full interview is an hour and forty five minutes because he just went into the world building or the, the universe building of sovereign mm. comics. And yeah, yeah. If that. you're working with him, you're in good hands, man. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Well, I tell you that guy should have like pushed me to the curve already because of the questions I'd be asking him, man. I, I just really appreciate that. That's a really good guy. He definitely wants to see, you know, see a, you know, young comic book creators like me to see, you know? Yeah. So it was pretty cool talking to him. He's a, he's a cool guy. Um, so speaking of other titles, um, if you could do a Delta Dogs crossover with any other indie title, what would it be? Man, that's a tough question. Let me see. So, <laughs> of course, uh, with Sovereign Union, um, with Temple High, you know, us actually going to an actual school <laughs> that would, would definitely help out with uh, the Delta Dogs and, you know, yeah. all the mistakes that they're going through. Uh, another title would be um, Umbrella Academy. Oh I yeah, some of their stuff. Yeah, and that'd be cool. You know, just <laughs> it'll be so much fun working with those guys, especially um. So you've seen it. So number five. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The the grown dude and a kid's body. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that'd be a tough influence, but at the same time, I feel like it'd be a fun story to tell. Yeah, that would be. That'd be cool. <laughs> That's awesome. So Ty Tyrone, you heard it here. Um, if you're watching this, Tyrone, you might need to work on another uh, title here, crossover title, my man. <laughs> yeah, that'd be cool. <laughs> what advice would you give others? You've already kind of hinted at this. Um, what advice would you give others who are wanting to go into the industry? Um, one thing I really struggled with. So I knew how I knew how to write um, to, of course, my standards at the time. Um, and I also got an artist to draw out everything. So, you know, that's about everything you need, you think, right? Right. But during that process um, of actually trying to get a book out, where printing, I'm thinking printing is the easiest thing in the world. All you have to do is just send off the PDF and that's it. You know, you get your book and whatever. Right. Uh, but you have to actually learn about, uh, this goes with a lot of things um, in the comic book industry uh, that you have to learn. And one of those things was actually getting everything uh, ready for print. Mm -hmm. You know, because you don't want your book to uh, some things to be getting cut off, you know, right uh, with your book and stuff like that. So you have to, like, get it to to the edge of the combo book and, you know, to certain formats and stuff like that. Yeah. So I'll definitely say, you know, watch some videos or ask some um, creators like me, Tyrone, people like us to figure out exactly what you want to do as far as um, your printing goes. 
of getting every all the uh, the fouls um, to to the sale of uh, being ready for print. So uh, because when I went through it, I spent a lot of time and money um, that I had to throw out again, uh, trial and error, and um, and that's another thing too. So I, I had a date set up for issue one for Delta Dogs. Mm-hmm. Um, it was like a month away. I had all the files ready, dialogue, um, letter, everything set up. So all I had to do was talk to the printing company. I'm like, okay, the same day I talked to the printing company was, um, and got everything situated. When I walked out, I posted on Facebook, like, hey, you know, Delta Dog's coming out this day and this and that. And again, for the next couple of weeks, um, it was just a straight headache because the, the, the books didn't come out right. Um, yeah. I didn't set the files out like I should have. Um, of course I had to pay money to get, uh, samples and stuff for that. And of course the deadline came, I couldn't, I couldn't produce. So my advice is to not only learn about printing, but also learn about, of course, having an actual physical copy in your hand before you actually put out a date, you know, cause you don't want to keep, you know, showing that disappointment of yeah. that, you know, that responsibility. So that's one thing I definitely went through. I definitely want to tell and encourage a lot of creators to actually have a product first and then put out a, a, a date saying that, Hey, look, the product's ready. You know, it's going to be released on this date and, you know, move forward with that. So that's really good advice. Can my, my day job is in marketing and printing graphic design and you're right. You. Printer, <laughs> yeah, printers speak a totally different language. And so yeah. you, you do have to learn their language. You got to learn what bleed marks are and crop yeah. marks and, all that stuff. So yeah, that's, that's really good advice, man. Yeah. <laughs> um, that is a learning curve for everybody who has to work with printers. Um, so where can people find season one of Delta dogs at, where can they go to, to download and, and buy your books or, or order print copies? Um, uh, well, of course you can order the whole set of Delta dogs, um, from millennial comics.com. Uh, of course you have posters up there as well of, you know, the Asian visual cousins, which I think is pretty cool. And you cool. also have, um, of course, Indiegogo, which it has um, a lot of cool prices up there. I'm actually doing a variant cover of issue one um, that I have printed out, you know, by the time the end of the campaign. I support it at that level just to get that variant. <laughs> now, I appreciate that. <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, um, <laughs> and then also, um, of course, you can get uh, PDF files from that too as well for, uh, from Indiegogo. And mentioned Comology, uh, the website, and all. Also, in the 757 area, we have uh, Delta Dog Comic Books all the way up to issue 10, and uh, comic book stores like uh, Comic Kings, yeah, um, Heroes and Villains. Uh, you know, so so uh, almost all the stores in Virginia Beach, Chesapeake, Newport News, and uh, Hampton. And one of my favorite ones, man, that this store owner is so cool, man. The store owner is so cool. Um, Comic Con, I mean, uh, Comic Kings is one of them. Uh, but it's another one, um, Atlanta Comics. No, oh, I'm sorry. I'm tripping. Am I tripping? <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm tripping. I'm sorry. Uh, well, his name is Scott. His name is Scott. And he's a really cool dude, man. Uh, so definitely visit his store. And I know it's in um, Autorium. There we go. Autorium Comics. Cool. Um, Where's that? Comic Comics. I'm sorry, Atomic Comics in Hampton. Okay. In Hampton. Yeah. Yep. Hampton and Newport News. Uh, he's, cool. he's a store owner named Scott, and he's a really good guy. And, you know, he'll definitely help you out, of course, with not only just the any comic book side. Of course, um, he does cards and stuff like that. So he's a pretty cool dude to talk to. Um, and, awesome. of course, uh, 1 through 10 is there as well. Very cool. Yep. Well, we, we will tag you in the description, obviously. And yep. everybody out there, I, I know I kind of say this after every interview because I only interview people that I really like. Um, oh, all right. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm in there. Yeah, right. you, you made the cut, man. Um, all right. These no, books are I'm awesome. Not. One through five. I've read one through five and they're fantastic. Can't wait to finish up the series. And um, they're they really good. And so um, go out, get them. It's, it's a totally different tale than really you've, you've experienced before. Um, Seven Cousins, getting superpowers and navigating that world. It's a really good story. Thank you, Vonnell, for, for writing that. And then thank you for um, being on here today, man. I oh, appreciate that, man. I, I just appreciate you inviting me. When I saw that email, I was like, 
I felt I felt like somebody. <laughs> I felt like somebody, and, and just uh, you know, for you to invite me, and um, I know we had to push back our interview a little bit, but you know, of course, we um, you actually worked with me on that, you know, and I really appreciate that, man. Um, right now, dude, you like kind of like one of the coolest dudes right now, so I appreciate that. <laughs> well, thank you. I, I feel like uh, nothing compared to you guys, you creator. So thank you, yeah. and. Um, <laughs> All right, everybody, you heard it from Von L. Go buy his books, man, and and, yep. and support well, him on Indiegogo. Uh, there we go. Number 10 <laughs> right there. You can get all of season one right now. Thanks again, Von L. Take it easy, man. Go.